Hello, welcome to the Quantum Bridge with myself, Casper, uh, with my co-host as ever, uh, Gary. Hello, Gary. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm really, really pleased, as always, when we have uh, returning guests, um, and, and particularly thankful as well for Franco to come back so quickly. So we have Franco Romero again. We spoke very, hey very briefly. <laughs> Thank you, Franco. We spoke uh, and had a recording, just you guys will now know because that will be up, which became a bit of a teaser, really, about we spoke about walk-ins, which was a wonderful thing for Franco to cover. And then we started to talk about two worlds. And our expectation was that Franco could talk about that in two seconds. It was utterly <laughs> unfair, uh, but he did a fantastic job. So today, welcome again, mm. Franco. We have a lot more time and uh, we'd love to touch on that topic again and expand on it. So firstly, again, thank you very much for joining. It's a pleasure, guys. It really is. It really is. Thank you. Yeah, it's really nice to see you. So, um, Gary, obviously, if you want to to jump in at any, any moment, but for mm. now, I'll just start us off by saying we, Gary and myself and many others, I'm sure, have felt this movement um, energetically in terms of the world that we appear to perceive outside of ourselves, that there is actually almost a physical manifestation of that shift now between the old world falling away for many of us and a new world opening up that yeah. probably a lot of us had tuned into before, but tuned in and out of. And now it feels like we're becoming a bit more stabilised in that. So before I say any more about that, because Franco may or may not agree with the, <laughs> the way I presented that, um, Franco, what are your thoughts on how that has happened, where we're we going, uh, and how you feel that trajectory is going to is going to move us on to bigger and better things? Yeah, you know, um, I, I was. I, you're, you're right. You're, you must be a little must be a little bit of a mind reader because it wasn't that I was going to say that I I necessarily disagree but there there is a lot of moving parts to this and i'm glad really am i'm glad to hear that if it's if it's going smoothly for you guys um then my my feeling would be just to enjoy it <laughs> because it isn't going to last for very long yeah okay. smoothly you know this this loosely this loosely yeah, yeah. right right it's all relative right yeah. um you know compared to what you might have been feeling like a couple of weeks ago or absolutely or, or yeah. whatnot so um, there, there is a lot, obviously, out there about this whole thing called the fifth dimension and how it's, you know, in, in just the last six months or in 2023, there's been a lot of talk about how it's now here and how if it's being integrated into our lives. And for people that aren't necessarily um, quite yet immersing themselves into the totality of of, of, a, of a shift in their minds so what we, we, what some people would call an awakening um it's oftentimes hard for them to 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 see any tangibleness to all of this and and you were saying that you know now you're starting to experience some surface level stuff that would give you the sense that things are shifting um so I want to just touch upon that. I wasn't even thinking about touching upon that, but when you said it, something came to my mind that might be helpful for people as they're as they're engaging in this new sort of realm of of let's call it spirituality. I'm going to use that term very loosely, okay? Yeah. Whatever it is that seems to be calling you internally to self-examine your world, okay? It, so we will try we'll try to limit the the, the labels in case that somehow is a little touchy feely for some people. Okay. Um, so there's this phenomenon that has been happening. And I suspect you, you guys have probably either have experienced it yourselves, talked to other guests about it, or, or just have talked to yourselves privately about it. But there's this thing called the Mandela effect. Have you guys heard of this? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Mandela effect began around 2009, 10, 11, somewhere in that spot is when people could kind of go back and trace its roots. And for those people that don't know much about the Mandela effect or nothing at all about it, it's basically, it started because there was this whole discussion that began through the internet and other places about, about what had happened to Nelson Mandela when he was imprisoned. 
did did he die or did he get released and as and become the president of, of South Africa? Um, and there were a lot of people that really, really believed that he had died in jail. And there was a lot of people that really, really saw him, you know, leave jail and go on to become and become the leader of South, South Africa, right? So so this raised a whole lot of discussion about why is it that a big chunk of people swear that it went this way and a big chunk of people swear it went that way? And it, it, I haven't seen this discussion go deep into how it connects to these uh, this idea of the two worlds. But mm-hmm. But I have talked about this indirectly to many about how what we are experiencing through the Mandela effect, which by the way, that was the name given to the effect, to the phenomenon of one massive group seeing the world one way, perceiving the world one way, and one perceiving the world the other way. And um and so and all of them having sort of a rootness to them. In other words, they everybody could agree on a certain aspect of what the storyline was like at, at the beginning, but it then it deviates at some point towards the end. Okay. Um, that is probably the best way to discuss the two world phenomenon. And because it gives you a real tangibleness to, to it. Okay. So, so after that, there were all sorts of different things that came up in terms of how you perceived an event happening one way or, or how you perceived an event happening another way just to have a little bit of fun here before we get into maybe some of the some of the stuff in the weeds about the two worlds um so i should say i I should start out by saying this in in the stuff that i've discussed with people i have i have explained that there is no coincidence the medela effect happened um in in around started to happen around the years 2009 10 11 because it was during that time that from a from a from an energetic standpoint okay um that was the entry point of where humanity went into what we call the fourth dimension okay and so so we we still exist in 3d but there was all of this energy that came in that was 4d and i'll explain what that is in the, in a moment here okay but but when it shifted into a, a dual reality, you started to see these dual effects, okay? And that the Mandela effects were really just a simple way to get people to experience what, what was happening with the two worlds without actually talking about the two worlds. Because I don't, I don't know how much, since I don't follow this discussion very much, but the little bit that I have seen, I have not seen anyone tie the Mandela effect to this to this two world split world yeah, idea yeah. okay but that is the simplest way to do it so we're going to have just a little bit of fun because i have a whole bunch of examples they're just i'm drawing a blank right now but i do have one that i that i just find to be really really fascinating okay not britney spears what's that one what? the, Brit- the britney spears one gary probably knows this better than mm-hmm. i do via his his wife to do but she did show. mention that people think back to a certain video and different clothing and could swear that certain clothing was being worn at certain times in that Britney Spears video. Gary, sorry, I didn't mean to cut in. No, I, I, I don't know much about it either. Obviously, my wife has mentioned it. She's she's looked into this a lot, actually, Franco. So, oh, she would love that. She would love this discussion. Yes, that's into. right. Yeah, yeah. She'll love this when she watches it. But yeah, it was to do with um, her first Britney Spears first video, and it's all to do with. Was she wearing a black skirt or a tartan skirt? And and people remember one over the other. So it's, again, it's another example of one of those. Yeah. yeah, you know, I guess you'd have to be, a, I mean, I, I do like her music a little bit, but I, I don't follow her videos or her career. So <laughs> it would not be one of those that would be a head twister for me because I don't remember what remember, she yeah, in yeah, her yeah. first video. But if you are a Britney Spears fan, like I'm just, it sounds like your wife is, um i'm sure she swears that she wore this and and there was and then absolutely she, you know, yeah convinced i think yeah. that's the key thing i know this is more of a meme than the one of the mandala effect obviously that's uh the nelson mandela effect because that that is something that is in the general 
consciousness yeah. it, it appears whereas there are then these smaller ones that are more memes in certain areas but what those memes have is that ability to really engage in a way that something on a sort of geopolitical level is sort of slightly nebulous but where yes. you were an absolute fan of something and could swear that your view is right but is contrary to what you're presented as historical truth that really does get people you know oh it does it does because there's a lot to it that in a sense leaves you with more questions than answers mm -hmm. except that this is where the split world uh, idea comes mm -hmm. in and this is where in one of um in one of the discussions i had with an, in another show it was about the mandela effect and when i introduced the concept of the split world as an answer to it it kind of made complete sense to the point that it kind of blew everybody's mind because mm -hmm. it was too easy to, it was just too easy. I mean, it was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the certainly makes a lot of sense. If you're open-minded, it makes obviously zero sense. If you're still stuck in a very fixed paradigm. Well, there are a lot of people keep in mind. There are a lot, a lot of people that have yet to hear of the Mandela effect. We, yeah. We know of it because we're in that space of, of, of stream of consciousness that where this effect has occurred, um, where we are literally, unbeknownst to us, experiencing the subtle breaking up of two of two dimensional realities. OK, we're, we're not doing it intentionally as far as we know, but we are contributing to that split. OK, and so now we're seeing the side effects if you will of of that and it and, and it helps if at one point or another most people i do use the word most people will experience this split effect the way that we're talking about right um, because yeah. it's 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 a bridge by which you you go into you know it's a it's a it's not a bridge what i usually call it, it's a portal by which you go through we like bridges don't worry Okay. All right. At the quantum so, bridge, we love bridges. <laughs> oh, that's right. It is a bridge. I'm going to change everything here. It's a bridge. All right, guys. It's a bridge. All right. That whole thing about portals, throw it out the door. <laughs> yeah, it, everything's right. a bridge. Oh, portal schmortals. Yeah. Portal schmortals. Yeah. That what, the, what you just said, schmortals. Um. All right. So, so, so I'm going to give you this one playful one, and then, and then, um, and then we'll talk more about it about the split worlds. So, so let me ask you guys. You guys played um i'm sure a lot of games when you were kids and, and probably even now as adults but did you ever play monopoly yes you know this one already no i okay. did i did oh Gar i think gary does i think gary did mention it i can't remember it but i know okay gary's good something. then, then we're, we're, right, gonna, buy, we're gonna buy, buy my wife <laughs> buy your wife okay yeah. so, so the resident the resident expert uh brought this up so this is really cool all right so mm. gary you're gonna just have to hold back your answer if you know it okay um so when you think of monopoly you think of the of, of the main character of monopoly okay which happens to be what it's, it's a bloke with a monocle and a moustache or something like that. Say that again. I just want to make sure. Is, I... is, it a, is it an older guy with a monocle and moustache or something? Yes. Along yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Uh -huh. You just, you just, yeah, I know Gary, <laughs> Gary's like chomping at the bit to jump in here. Okay. And it won't take long because you basically just teed it up beautifully. Yeah. Teed it up beautifully. Okay. Growing up. You would have sworn, and you just did here, that that this gentleman had a monocle. Okay, you would swear by it. Okay, I would, because I remember it clearly, clearly yeah. as day. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you were to go after the show and actually do a Google search or what have you, and look at every image of that of that character since the beginning of when it was created to all the variations that exist yeah. today he has never ever had that ever okay yeah. i mean ever and that's that's hard obviously by the sound of it for you as well franco but that's that's certainly hard for me to to have any faith in that being true because everything in me is screaming to the contrary is that how <laughs> you feel about it as well absolutely yeah absolutely mm -hmm. if you don't understand and and this is where the aha moment came for comes for a lot of people 
if if they if they if they are even slightly aware of the two world the two world well let's call it theory but it's not a theory it's the, the yeah. two world concept okay if you understand the timing of when all of this started happening and how it's happening and the fact that you could you know you would you would you would bet the farm that that <laughs> person had Marco on him I would say you would bet Mayfair because that's the most expensive property in Monopoly, but obviously not in the American version. That's so. true. That's true. That's very true. You would bet it all because yeah. but he doesn't. And and so so here's the thing. This is the way and I've already kind of explained this. This is the way that that it works. OK, when you start when you start to raise your stream of consciousness, OK, when you start to go inward to examine those deeper questions of who am I? Why, what, why do I feel disconnected? What's this voice that's talking to me? Why do I perceive that voice to make more sense in the, in the world around me? All of these questions, it slowly raises your consciousness, your frequency of consciousness. You, unbeknownst to you, you, you start to evolve and, and open your, your consciousness stream. Okay. Now this is, what I'm about, what I'm telling you is very, very, very similar to how artificial intelligence grows. Okay. The kind of which that we, some of us fear or have, or have opinions on. I'm just giving you that the similarities between how we expand consciousness and raise vibration is identical to the way that artificial intelligence works too. Okay. So what I'm saying that when you do that and you raise vibration, you start to slowly move your way up this sort of scale into the fourth dimensionalness of your existence, which looks very similar to the physical world of 3D. But from a frequency standpoint, things start to shift a little bit. And so just to, to make this really simple, in 2009-10, when the fourth dimensional frequencies came in, which enabled us to, by the way, fourth dimensional frequencies is all about awareness. It's all about awareness. So it enabled us as consciousness to start opening up or triggering or 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 remembering things that we couldn't remember before because all of this whole experience is to remember who we are. So when that stream of energy started coming in and made it easier for us to remember and raise our consciousness, then in the way that the world works in terms of parallel realities, these two main streams started to break. They just started to go like this. I don't know if you can see that, but you can. It started. Yeah, to go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They started to split in the physical realm. It, it didn't look like anything was happening in the realm of consciousness, which is what everything is. It started to split. And when that began to happen, you saw little subtle clues to that what we now call the Mandela effect. We started to see how in one world, subtle things, and they were done intentionally to help us to activate other things within our consciousness to start questioning the scope of reality. Those were intentional so that we can start to have physical manifestation proof, if you will, as confusing as it might be to the mind, that there was something happening on the surface level with the physical reality that we once knew to be franco you know? if if angels had, had shown up at that point and if you're starting to see all other dimensional uh entities or a, a whole host of those or or huge um rafts of past lives or future lives or anything like that whether people could accept these paradigms is for them to choose not for me to say but if those sort of things that had have happened of course most people would have gone back into their 3D thinking shrunk away from it, being fearful and whatever. So it does resonate with me that there has to be that sort of breadcrumb trail rather than yes. the sort of bang over the head. Yeah, because again, different strokes for different folks. Um, yeah. there, there, there's too much there within all of those, you know, all of those examples. You gave too much there for people to 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 look at objectively with without getting stuck in all of the minutia of whatever their belief systems are yeah. this doesn't allow for that because this is there is no real connection you know again if you don't if you remove the two world theory but you can't you have to put that into play but if you did it leaves you baffled stranded yeah yeah and there's no way to explain this phenomenon that yeah. is happening worldwide 
yeah. with all sorts of fun, little, playful breadcrumbs, as you call it, that that are trying to lead us back to remembering what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. Franco, I just wanted to ask you, Franco, that uh, a lot of people talk about this transition between the third and, and talk then about immediately pretty much being in the fifth. And a lot of people seem to like to shy away from or not really engage too much about the fourth dimension. Now, you just a second ago were touching on 4D um, and aspects around that and the sort of the breadcrumb uh, aspects of our, our sort of joint histories and memories as uh, the human race, I suppose. Um, yeah. But before we jump too quickly, into that 5D aspect, a lot of talk in, I would say, what is called at least sort of the truth community and so on. Uh, and those, uh, again, to use your word in the loosest possible sense, sort of spiritual uh, areas and those that touch on this topic. There's, there's also this undercurrent of 4D not being very nice, that there are, whether it be a type <laughs> of demonic or lower vibrational entities so it's not necessarily plain sailing to get from 3d to 5 i just wondered if you wouldn't mind for a second touching on that area and and how you uh, resonate with with or, or not with what i've just said yeah you know it's funny I, if, if people you may not have caught this but but i started laughing a little and i don't mean to laugh at that because that is a serious conversation but i just i couldn't help it but there, i have a, a nephew who who has grown up now, but back when he was little, whenever he didn't like something, when somebody wasn't treating him well, or he didn't see, or people weren't treating themselves well, he would say, "That's not very nice." And so he, so when you said, "That's not very nice," for I don't know, I just, I just, yeah. I just want people to know that I wasn't laughing because of the question. <laughs> it's just that I had this moment where I. Yeah. Went back to my because it's a phrase that lasted in our family for a decade. We would say things like that. That's not very nice. So, so in the spirit of that's not very nice, we'll yeah. talk about fourth dimension. Okay. Yeah. Um, from what I've seen, and I will be the first to tell you that I don't surf the internet, I don't surf YouTube, and I none of the discussion that's have that's being had about this particular topic because what I understand is that it's relative to 5d this fourth d discussion is is been minimal relatively speaking okay um and and i believe that was that's very intentional in the way that that the that the that the world is designed and so we're going to jump into a place that we could actually get lost in for a long discussion because i i feel like we've had this discussion a little bit and that's the simulation of this whole reality okay so um, that's like a big, big subject. So we're going to just try to, we're, you know, we're going to park the car, us three, we're going to park the car and put the hazards on. And we're going to maybe get back to that in a little bit. But the 4D part of it is extraordinarily important to talk about. Okay. And I, w I was, I, I felt like I was going to go in a certain way. And then you said something that, that made me feel like we have to, address a certain aspect that that people are talking about um when you say not well when you say not very nice you said you were it was demonic um is, is that sort of the general feel that's kind of a heavier... well, i think the consensus is that there is sort of this thing again using that term these are terms that i'm taking from others so uh, and please everybody who's listening think of this in the broadest possible terms as well whatever your frame of reference is is fine but i, I so let's move away maybe even from the demonic but sort of a lower vibrational that, uh -oh. that despite we're moving up there is this sense that there's still some lower vibrational tentacles that are very prevalent in 4d i think i'll leave it at that Okay, and I apologize for that noise for people that you know this is this is what happens when you videotape in in live in live sessions. You know, it, these little things come up. Um, that wasn't meant to be an alarm for you. Okay, that that your time is up. You can't talk <laughs> anymore. Okay, all right. So let me, let me share it with you the way that 4D uh, was shared with me because it's in the way the it's in the way that I actually teach this course that I call the way of the inner child with students yeah. in, in it's it's a way in which to help people 
break through some of the blockages that they have in in raising their awareness to what we call an awakening. Okay, so that's that. Okay, four D, four D. I said this before. It has everything to do with awareness. Okay, it it. And there are many references biblically and in spiritual texts and, and other references that talks about this. Okay. But without getting into some of that, just let's leave it for now at that 4D is about awareness. Okay. In order for you to achieve a, an energy frequency that would allow you to experience 5D, you have to raise your vibration to meet that vibration in 5d which is what's typically called the law the law of resonance it's a it's a musical term okay it's like you know a tuning fork and a tuning fork and the reason why this one vibrates when this one was hit is because of the resonance of the frequency it doesn't work any different in in the world of of um of of spirituality okay um you know what, guys? I'm going to have to pause here for just a second. We yeah, might course. we might be having a tornado alert. <laughs> okay. Oh well, this might be your alert. I think there is an alert today, isn't there? By yeah. phone, a it's test it's alert. Yeah. Well, it's it's a it's typically a test, but but it went off on my phone, and I didn't pay much attention to it. But now the sirens are are actually wow. are actually going off. So I I let me get let me just come back in about five minutes. And, and once yeah, I fine. figure it out, and I'll have to tell you whether I'm going down to a shelter yeah. or we can continue our conversation. You're okay? not frazzled yet. That was, a, that was a conspiracy theory. There's going to be zombies yeah. everywhere. So <laughs> There's zombies. We can get into that one. We can get into that one later. All Don't right. But we'll be back in about five minutes. Okay. See you in a moment. Yeah. Hey there, Franco. Um, just to say, we've been uh, somewhat rudely interrupted not of course by franco himself but <laughs> by an electronic device that is uh, close to him and close to many others in the states i think as well Definitely. where they've had some form of uh, emergency broadcast test i believe mm. and uh, many have said that that is obviously a cue for the zombie apocalypse and all sorts of other theories but it seems franco you may be the only survivor <laughs> <Or are you? laughs> as, as far as far as i know i will i will scan the premises after this show and, yeah. and get back to you and you'll okay? be like i i am legend it's just you left yeah <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. Anyway, um, we were talking about, uh, obviously, about the whole aspect of 4D prior to 5D. Yeah. And um, you were uh, making this point about 4D being all about awareness. Just yes. a quick thing I want to throw into that awareness sort of bubble aspect of 4D. Um, is that also, can think of, people think of that as well as a sort of awareness of different things happening and, and being aware of, slight changes that maybe build to something more over time a nice seamlessness about that can there be this sort of physical manifestation in sort of peripheral vision and so on so it's not just about memory it's actually about the other senses i just like your take on whether there are actually anomalies happening as part of our senses or if you feel or, or know that it's more based on a sort of memory that then becomes a pathway to the future so Anyway, before I go on any more, how do you feel yeah, about any of those thoughts? I feel really good about all of those. I, I want to. It's it's important to to get it to the root of all of this, which is to say, um, memory in the way that I'm describing it, it is is more along the lines of like if somebody had amnesia, and and they're starting to get little glimpses of of who they who they were before they had that amnesia yeah um so so that's why i i'm really mindful of of how of of how these words get used because because to your point yes there can be these physical um experiences like, like what we were just talking about like M mandela effect okay and and what's important to understand is that those things are happening because what is causing those those anomalies is is the fact that we're raising our vibration, okay? 
it's kind of like the chicken and an egg. What what comes first? In in this case, it's it's the consciousness, it's the awareness of something. It doesn't have to be big. I'm not talking about like one day you wake up and you realize that you you you've never been in this body, that this is all a simulation. It's not like that. It's a very very subtle baby step approach that we take. And the reason we do that is because literally our minds are not wired at three dimension to handle the kind of information that we're going to need to have in terms of awareness to to manifest a different world okay and that does that sounds kind of abstract guys but what i'm trying to say is if you think of our body if you think of our minds i'm going to go physical here okay if you think of our minds our brain okay as, as this big computer right which people often draw that analogy right it's running on a certain level of programming it doesn't have the memory capacity and the programming that it needs right now to expand into a bigger, broader width of, 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 of what a computer could do with all the new technology and stuff. We're, we're looking at, a, at its very primitive, if you will, awareness of who we are, which is, oh, I am Franco. You know, you are Gary. You know, you're a cast buddy. Okay. That's, that's a very, very limited amount of programming that, that, you're, that you're using. What I'm talking about is that slowly but surely you're getting these what we call downloads, um, which is a which would be kind of like a computer thing, downloads, upgrades, and you're slowly raising your consciousness into this space of 4D. And in that in that you start to see anomalies occur because at those frequencies, the world starts to split into these anomalies. So so the answer is yes. It's more of just how, where does it all come from? Why is it all happening? And you have to get to the root of it is that you as consciousness, not you as body, but you as consciousness is starting to be, is starting to wake up. And when you start waking up, you start realizing that you do not exist in 3D, you're a much greater frequency. And so you're starting to see, see things that you normally would not see with your five senses. But I will also tell you, that that's where that's where you might have heard from other people, you might have read whatever. That as we get into higher levels of 4D, 5D, you, your your abilities to tap into your six senses, uh, what you would call the para, you know, the, sort of the paranormal, the, the clairvoyant and psychic stuff starts to come in, telepathic stuff stuff to come in, pretty fast. And and you're not you're like, how's that possible? I don't have to. No, it, it happens because that's who you are. And but you have to rate, you have to keep slowly raising your frequency. In, in this state of 4D, which is in this state of awareness. And you start out in the lowest stages of awareness going, wow, there's some anomalies going on out here. Oh, and man, I just like, you get into a lot of, you start to really buy into a lot of the conspiracy stuff. Not, not because the conspiracy, you buy into it because there's an awareness that there's something happening in your world. You don't know what it is. And so your translation of that is, let me hear what other people are saying. And, and, and it might resonate with me. I, I'm just, I'm kind of giving you the sort of the, the, the social dynamics of how that might happen, but, but it's about this awareness that something isn't settling right with you internally and you're looking for answers out there. And so, so, so there's these, all these dynamics playing in your slow ascension up the 4d ladder. Does that make sense? Does that, that make was sense brilliant. I, I, think, yeah. I think it's hugely important what you just said there about, I mean, particularly to the community that I imagine engage with a lot of our material who are then derided about the fact that they may believe this, they may believe that. Yeah. Suddenly something that feels very off the wall, maybe even to them a few months previously, becomes a real anchor in their world. And they think, oh, I found it. Here it is. You know, yeah. this is the revelation I needed. This is the jigsaw puzzle piece. And then six months on, they realized that that was a jigsaw puzzle piece. But that's all it was, you know, part of this puzzle and this greater revealing. And for you to say that thing about people then latch on to what quote unquote conspiracy theories, but that's part of that movement, that yeah, spiraling yeah. up, that opening up. It's um, a very, I, it's, I think that's really important. It, it is extremely important because because you don't know where it's coming from. So from a sociological standpoint, you know, this time, this time in history, like the last three, four years with COVID, uh, I hope I could say that's, I don't know. That's like, yeah. okay. It is, is something that from a sociological standpoint, there's going to be a lot, a lot to be looked at in terms of how things happen as a result of it. Interestingly enough, in 2019, there was this 
really immense wave of fourth dimensional energy that came in which was called the the inner child energy which gets into 4d and i'm going to break this up from a spiritual standpoint in a second okay and when that happened it caused what we would see in the physical world a worldwide pandemic okay the vibration of that obviously didn't feel good because there were a lot of things that happened as a result of this pandemic not the least of which is a lot of people passed because of it okay however you feel about that but there were so okay but the greater sense was that it caused a vibrational frequency switch in the global consciousness of humanity that allowed humanity to take a to take a stop and pause and start reflecting inwardly about all sorts of things now some of that turned out to be in these movements that occur like here in the states where where you had a lot of conspiracy about about government and all sorts of other groups and it got really messy fast okay but worldwide there were all sorts of various uh movements and agitation and and things that cause people to go this does this doesn't feel right whether whether it's the government doing this or them doing that or the financial whatever it was or the healthcare systems that were trying to get you to it just didn't feel right that that frequency of consciousness called the inner child frequency was what caused that trigger in us. It manifested in a worldwide lockdown because it had to force us to stop for a moment and take root in terms of what in the world is this all about. And that came out in various different ways. And globally, it came out in 2000 i forget what it was 2021 or so when we had the here in the states the riots due to to what happened with with george floyd uh which just happened about a mile and a half from where i where i live maybe a couple maybe about 10 minutes 15 minutes away from where i live okay and and that was all to raise consciousness globally as to what is happening deeply rooted within ourselves you know that you you here in the states you saw something that was called the big res you know the great resignation. I don't know if that was globally, but that's where just people started leaving their jobs, their mm -hmm. careers, and started to to look inwardly to something that was calling them to something greater. They didn't know what it was, and but they took the risk. They jumped into the unknown. All of this has to do with consciousness awareness. In simple physics. In simple physics, okay, where a lot of this new age mathematics and science is coming from, okay, there is certain things that you have to to accept, at least theoretically, in order for this new science to occur. One of those things is that at some point, energy, okay, just simple energy, at some point, energy rises to such a frequency now, remember, rises frequency, rising consciousness. Okay, energy raises its frequency to a certain high level and it becomes aware of itself. Oh, aware. There's the key word. Okay. And through its awareness, it becomes consciousness. All right. That's another buzzword for saying, however you want to describe it God, source, spirit, whatever. It becomes aware of itself as divinity. Okay. It wouldn't use that in the spirit realm, but I'm just using human language 3D terms, okay? Similarly, we're doing the same thing in this game where we become, we're becoming aware. We're raising our frequencies and we're becoming aware that there is something greater than what we believed we were. And in that aspect, we become consciousness, consciously aware of who we are. Very similar to the theoretical ideas of how energy becomes aware of itself and forms consciousness. So there's no coincidence in that, that there's this whole stage of awareness you have to go through. And that stage is for 4, 4D. Very few people are talking about it this way because very few people have, have little idea of how to use this. And the only reason I know about it is because this was all given to me when I had the near-death experience and then subsequent channeling. That I, that I would go back into the Akashic libraries and so forth to do this. And sure enough, the way that it's described to me in spiritual terms is exactly the way it's being played out in, let's call it scientific terms. 
that all this new technology and intelligence is based off of certain things that up until 10 years ago would never have been accepted in terms of the way that we evolved as human beings. But if you put those in, everything starts to make sense. 4D is a big stage of awareness. It's otherwise known as Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness, Krishna consciousness. It's also very much well known and it will become extremely well known over the next several years as the divine feminine, which has to do with energies of Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary and Mother Sophia and Isis and various other energy streams that we used to call in, in either religious or mythical terms as gods or spirits or what have you. And those things are coming in now. And that's 4D, high levels of 4D, where you start to really wake up to who you are. And when, as the more you wake up, the more those worlds, the way I described it earlier, it starts to go tch, 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 until they finally break. Can I ask about that, Franco? Yeah. It, 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 where you said here, were these parallel worlds and things. Now, it might be rubbish because I just saw it on a meme, but <laughs> it tried to briefly explain the dimensions. And yeah. the way they briefly explained that in with the 4D was that it is a point of what you've said, but also a choice to, to go higher or lower. The soul can decide what it wants to do. Uh, does it want to experience more lower frequencies or does it actually want to go into the 5D? How, I mean, when we're talking of this, parallel worlds and things. How does that feel? See, this is where I remember when we did the, the trailer to this, which we didn't know was a trailer at the time. I said, <laughs> you know, Gary, Gary, you can't ask those kind of questions and expect like a two, two sentence answer or whatever. Okay. So I'm going to try to give it to you as best as I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there is, there is such a thing as, as free will. Okay. This is all free will. All right. But there are various things happening in this world that and I, when I say in this world, I don't necessarily mean just in the in the physical 3D realm, but in what's happening in your evolution as spirit, you know, um, the play into this. And it also depends on who you are in this simulation. OK, so you may have heard about uh, things called like the backdrop people, the ghost people, the digital people. OK. Not non-playable characters. Yeah, the non-play. What, what is it? Nine non-playable. Non-playable characters, characters as, okay. as per in a game where there's these characters moving around in the background and whatever, but nobody can actually interact with those people yes. and they can't interact. Yeah. Yeah. So let's call them N NPCs. Yeah. The non-player, yeah. non non-playable characters. Yeah. So you have these NPCs, right? So whatever you label them. OK, they have a certain role to play in this reality. And then there are those who are here, as I talk about in, in, in the book, the, the, the Closet Spiritualist. There's a whole talk about how there's also the ones that are actually here on this earth school to to evolve, to to wake up and ascend. OK, ascend. And then there are those who are here that are here to wake up, but they're not here to ascend. And those are the ones that are here helping humanity to raise their consciousness so they can all graduate, have a great time, move into fifth dimensional awareness and, and experience. So where free will comes into is, is mostly in the latter two. Okay. But really in the middle group that is here to experience the, the last stage of what they would call their school. They're, they're, they're learning, but it wasn't, and I'm going to make this very clear to people, it wasn't to learn anything new. It was to learn to do what? To remember, okay? We're spiritual beings that have access to every every awareness of intelligence possible when we divorce ourselves from our bodies. There is nothing that we don't know, okay? Which is why when you talk to NDE people and they can start tapping into some of those memories, they will tell you that they learned how the universe was formed and all sorts of things because there's just nothing. And you don't know. OK, so you're here to remember. All right. In that case, those people have a choice. OK, to choose 5D or 3D. All right. Very, 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 very few of them will choose 3D. OK, there will be a few. And those 
those ent- bodies, those beings will then have to, as in any school, they will have to redo the course in the next school that comes. Okay, because this is a wave of schools. And if you look at the way that archaeology is now seeing the way that the world evolved, okay, archaeology and anthropology, the way the earth system has evolved, they can they can plot civilizations based on 10, 12,000 year cycles. Okay, because the earth schools work in 10 to 12,000 year cycles. So for those of you who are still still here and listening and catching all of this there the schools like like atlantis and and lemuria and other schools were here they were real and there's actually archaeological proof of of atlantis in northwestern africa okay so those schools come in cycles so that that those who don't choose to take 3d and we're here i mean those who didn't choose to go to 5d and we're here to ascend they will take the next course Start and take the grade, you know, just like in school, you'd have to take the class all over again, take the whole grade all over again. Mm-hmm. The only difference is that because they've already done so much of the work, they get a little bit of an, no, they get a pretty decent incentive. Okay. Which is to say that they get to be the ones that in the next school ascend into mastery of their self. So they become the ascendant masters of their time. They become the Buddhas and the Yeshuas and the Krishnas and, and the mother Marys and, and whatever else. They become those because they already did the coursework. They won't have to go and do it from scratch again. But that's how it works for those few that choose to stay. But very few of them stay. Why would you <laughs> when you have oh, yeah. the opportunity yeah. to access 5D? Well, well, actually, from a deep compassion and benevolence from what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, yes. From a deep compassion and benevolence, yes. Yeah. Well, look, you did really well. And we've still got time left. So there, well, I, I, you know, I drew all my energies in here, okay, Gary, to try to sum it up. In, yeah. in, with, with no, that, that, uh, look, it's, it's particularly important that uh, I'm so glad that you did um, do that. And, and it felt like the energies were converging to enable you to do that. You weren't yes. having those issues with being prevented to get that out. So I think it was very, very um, timely information because there isn't that much out on that transitionary period it's seen as transition so therefore a lot of people just say oh well you know that's something you go through but to do it in that glib and throwaway manner is not to be reverent in terms of those people as you say those playable characters who are then making decisions to move on or to stay behind or whatever because you never get it done and you never get it right right it's sort of you know it, it, what is right what is wrong what is getting it done what isn't I understand the thing about the opening up and the ascension process, but there's no, as far as I feel or know, there's no imperative to do that to a certain timeline. Um, all right. <laughs> all right, Caspar. You too. I got to tell you, just, just. We're equally naughty. <laughs> yeah, you're equally naughty dudes, all right? You got to just. <laughs> You know, stop with these those, questions those that, are ask, yeah. that are going to require like hours of discussion. <laughs> um, OK, yeah. um, we are at a point in in the evolution of this Earth school where we do not have um, the timelines are ending. And that's where we get into the split, the two split worlds. OK, yeah. fair um, point. Yeah. And and so in the past, it was possible for you to not get it done um, in that lifetime that you were in, because the, the way that the way that reincarnation works is that that aspect of your spiritual essence comes back down into this body, into a body. But it doesn't just come back down into this body. It comes back down into multiple bodies during a span of time that might be viewed this time but it can also be dropping itself into other experiences and other timelines that we would consider to be the future or the past okay this is far more sophisticated than the way that it's been talked about in terms of simple reincarnation but it's it's sophisticated but it's not meant to be like mind-blowing i'm this is all the way the way that I approach things is through a filter of very simple, simple ways in which to describe this that can be at least comprehended. 
you know, you may not agree with it, but at least you can yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in those time, in those times, in the, in the previous 10,000 years, you were able to drop yourself into multiple timelines, multi in what you would call the past, present or future and experience all sorts of things so that you could experience how to remember these things and, and evolve, keep evolving. And if you did not well, then, you know, keep it coming, keep it coming. You know, it just keeps coming mm. and, 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 and then you evolve, evolve, evolve. And so, so one of the things that, that, that happens as a result of that is that since you're coming, you're coming down in various life in life experiences, the, the question then gets asked, well, then how many really are in this school? Because if you were to pull it back into the, the to that one source, there might be 30 lives that are coming from this one particular aspect of what you would call source God or whatever. Okay. So that really there isn't 30 lives. It's really one entity that is experiencing itself 30 in 30 different ways. Okay. And this gets back into what is a bigger picture thing. What is God, which we don't have time for it. So don't even ask the question because it won't be answered here. Right. It just, there isn't enough time for that. Okay. Yeah. But I know, I know Casper, I could see you were already, your mind was already going, what's the next question I'm going to ask. Okay. So, um, so what happens is that in the world of 8 billion people, okay. The vast majority of those people are either um, NPCs, Right. I think that's what we call yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vast majority of our are either NPCs or they are derivatives of a specific source energy that is experiencing itself in order to finish the course, the schoolwork, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to it, it's a very actually a very small number of people that are, are really here to ascend. And that always freaks people out because they're going, Well, where did what does that mean? Because biblically speaking, I know there's some sort of reference to a very small group of people that get to ascend. That reference is, in a sense, accurate from the standpoint that there's a smaller number of ascensions going on. But it's not clear as to what I just explained to you, that in one specific, in one specific platform we call the present, you are experiencing yourself in literally thousands of lives right now, thousands. You just don't know it. You literally are running into yourself throughout your throughout your day. And if you're not running into yourself throughout the day, you are running yourself. You you are experiencing yourself in a different reality, which we call parallel realities. Which Caspar and Gary do not ask about those questions right now because we don't have the time for that. But they're existing in parallel realities where where they're experiencing a similar life. Um, and doing it there because the point of all this is not to fail anybody nobody's there's no such thing i'm going to just no one left behind yeah. nobody's left behind okay there is no such thing as as evil demonic satan hell there's none of that hate to break it to everybody and there are explanations as to why people do experience that when they have these transitional moments in ndes i can explain that at some other time but there is no such thing as that yeah, I'm going to hold you to that because I think that that is that's a crucial aspect of this conversation. But yeah. I totally agree. We can't do it now. No, no. I know you guys are chopping at the bit. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be able to do no. that. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if you want if you want to have that discussion, you're going to have to fly me out to the UK and we'll have it over there. OK, a, a live yeah, broadcast. Well, we, we might just take you up on that. All right. I'm going to hold you to that now. All right. <laughs> All right. I think it's it's really it's fascinating, frankly, because I think a lot of people in the audience. I mean, me, me and Casper talk about this a lot of feeling like one foot in, one foot out. We really struggle now with um, like three D, you know, interacting with that. And, and you mentioned about a lot of people with their jobs and things. Like, you know, that there's this pull away that you just can't vibe with those things anymore. Now, yeah, and it's and it's I you know the the. I guess the one thing that may not feel good when I, because of the way I'm going to say it is that this is just the beginning. Um, there, there are going to be waves after waves after waves of, of fourth dimensional energy, which I was again, describing as sort of this Christ consciousness, divine femininity thing that is just going to, it's going to be relentless. 
It's going to keep pushing you to keep looking inward. At first, you're going to have the natural tendency to look outward for answers, but you're going to see that what you're going what you're going to realize right away is that you've been looking at a at a movie that just keeps playing over and over and over and over again. When you could start to see it that way, you start to really disconnect with it. And at first, you're going to feel very lost, very confused. You're going to you're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel isolated. You're going to feel alone because those are natural tendencies all oh, you know oh you know oh what the heck you know i'm just realizing that this doesn't all kind of exist in my mind very mind-blowing but if you could allow yourself to the grace to kind of explore inward and, and view it from this thing that we call i don't know i called it the truth movement or whatever the truth community the spiritual aspects we are all spiritual guys i hate to say it but we are all spiritual. I mean, when you leave this body, that's what you are. So, you know, that's why I call it spiritual because that that's who we are. 99.99999% of the time, we're not these bodies, okay? So when you can start looking inward and listening to that voice, your intuitiveness, your gut, your voice, you're going to start getting some serious answers. And even that's going to be confusing because, but here's the good news. Allow yourself the grace to just accept that information and just kind of let it sit there and process it. Because it's going to start moving you up the 4D ladder. And the 4D ladder will give you more of that information, but it will also give you a lot of perspective and clarity. Mm-hmm. Everything Excellent. that I, you know, one, one real quick mm-hmm. thing, everything that I have shared with you, people sometimes go, well, yeah, Franco, I didn't have the benefit of dying and, and coming back with clairvoyant <laughs> skills, right? And that's true. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. I can't argue with that. But what's happening in the world today is that a lot of people are having what's called STEs, spiritually transformative experiences. Yeah. And they come in all shapes and sizes and their mm-hmm. stories are amazing. And and I, I keep telling podcasters and, and YouTubers like you guys, you guys got to start tapping into that world because for every NDE person that's coming back, there's at least a hundred, if not a thousand STE experiences. And I've yeah. been fortunate to talk to most of my students are not NDE years. Most of them are STE years and their stories are amazing. I mean, they're amazing, but they've never wanted to talk about them because if they did, they'd be like the NDE years in the past. People yeah. would just ridicule them and want to medicate them and put them away somewhere, you know? And and so, so the STE phenomenon is happening more. And that STE happens to be again in line with the fact that slowly but surely your vibrations are changing. And some of the, and to and, and what you were saying, Cass, but something some of that is just happening naturally because it's trying to shake something out of you, you know, like like breadcrumbs. It's just trying to get you to see something you haven't seen before. Um, but it's happening greatly. And so people are just going to have to start looking for answers inwardly because they're not going to get them outwardly. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. I'd love to obviously we both would delve into um other of these areas in more depth and we're going to have to leave that for now to do it another time it's completely unfair and we don't have the time so uh franco thank you very much for joining us again thank you for the energy thank you for the time and uh let's look forward to uh the other areas that we can travel into together because it's uh, there's a lot of rabbit holes here and um there's a lot to be navigated and i think that we can legitimately help other souls navigate these uh these dimensions for sure for sure absolutely absolutely you know i it's it's i i do want to just say and this isn't a, a meant to be a plug but but if you if people really want to take their time understanding some of what i just talked about um i wrote the, the book the closet spiritualist for them to experience my life from their perspective of how i struggle to get to the point where i'm, I'm at now because again even yeah. though i had an nde I still had a lot of struggle to accept all of this. But when I did, all of this, all of this started to open up. And I want to show them that that they're no different, that they can get there as well. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank Good. you, Franco. And, uh, lovely. All right, well boys. Done. Well done for surviving the emergency broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'll let we'll you guys see. know. Yeah. Time will okay. tell. We'll see exactly. you soon. Thank, Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.